What's up everyone, my name is Paul and you're watching Defined Films and today I'm doing a bit of an audio test, testing different setups for vlogging, interviews and all of that. But first, coffee. Oh, and not to forget Stroopwafel. I've been to Amsterdam uh, this past week and you can't leave Amsterdam without bringing a few stroop waffles with you. They are mm, also called syrup waffles uh, in English. So, yeah, they're yummy. Mm. Yeah, let's go. So yeah. Here I am. I'm actually vlogging, uh, kind of. I'm. Uh, I was just taking a bit of a drive because I'm going to do some bit of shopping and stuff. Got the camera and uh, just saw this, the uh, all the fog, and it's absolutely beautiful in the golden light from the setting sun that is right behind me. And uh, yeah, I just had to film a bit, and uh, yeah, it's. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. This shot on the iPhone 7, by the way. Uh, normal one, not the Plus version. And uh, using the inter the, the built-in microphones. So I have no idea how this will sound. But I'm using the app Filmic Pro and uh, shooting it in log, which is kind of cool. Like you can actually do that on a mobile phone nowadays. Anyway, time to go back home because I am fucking freezing my hands off. So, see you in a bit. Ah, it's bloody cold outside. But anyway, today I'm testing out the two different sound setups. Uh, the first one is the Rode Smart Lab Plus, going through the Astens Pro XD wireless transmitter system, straight into my ACC300, which is currently filming me. And uh, the uh, settings on that one is set to one, or the audio level, in, or the input is set to one, and it's pretty much Perfect level straight out of the camera. Uh, the second microphone is a Rode NTG4 shotgun microphone, which is right above me, about mm, two feet maybe. Uh, not even that. And uh, that one is going through XLR into the Blackmagic Video Assist 4K, which is currently recording this as well in ProRes 422. Uh, I have noticed uh, that there is a bit of a um, delay difference in the audio feeds, so one coming from the camera to the video assist and one going straight into it, but that's easy enough to sync up in post, so no worries. Um, hopefully both are sounding pretty decent and uh, I'm really happy with the uh, results I've gotten with NTG4 so far. I've just had a few small plays with it, but uh, this is pretty much the first decent test I'm doing with it. Uh, it's in my living room, which is a very untreated room, uh, quite echoey, as you probably can tell. But uh, if you're doing indie films or short films with a skeleton crew, a small crew, um, you won't have the time or the resources to treat every room you're in, and it'll most likely be in someone's apartment, and I don't think they'll be that happy to uh, put sound absorbers on their walls and hang up blankets everywhere and stuff and yeah it's it just turns into a mess so this is pretty much uh, real world results that you can expect from filming well in someone's apartment so let's do a bit of testing first off the lavalier microphone one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So let's do the same thing with the road. Or actually, no, let's just 
replay that session, or let's just replay that clip, but listening to the other microphone. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Well, you can judge for yourself. I'll uh, just normalize the levels on both microphones to the same uh, dB level. I uh, won't do any compression or noise cancellation on any of them, so you can actually hear what they'll sound straight out of the box, pretty much. The next thing you need to test is actually going outside and seeing how they fare with wind and uh, emit natural, natural noises, uh, such as water and rain, maybe. Depends. And, uh, well, just wind, mostly. I know the shotgun microphone will do really well because I've also got the uh, Rode Blimp for it uh, with the Dead Wombat and you can stick that thing in front of a fan and it'll still pick up clean noise or clean audio. Uh, the lavalier microphone though, I know from using it earlier but hooked to a smartphone that it does cope with wind quite well. So. Anyway, I'm testing both of these at the same time because that's how I plan to use them for film shoots and stuff. Because, sure, a shotgun microphone is good. Uh, it's really handy. It's a very useful tool when it comes to audio. But having a backup is always a good thing. And that's where this lavalier microphone comes in. You can hide it somewhere. Uh, if you're doing over-the-shoulder shots, put it on the uh, actor that is not facing the camera and have the speaking actor pick up his audio through the lavalier mic on the person in front of him. That's a very useful tip. Um, I'll go into a bit more in depth on this later on to maybe show you a few setups of... Um, I need to start ru stop rubbing my hands like this because that is definitely going to pick up on the microphones. Uh, dry hands, you know. Um, so yeah, having two microphones recording the same pieces of dialogue is always a good thing because you never know, one might fail and uh, one might be picking up static noise, whatever. And that means ADR. And you should always, always aim to avoid ADR because it's never as good as the real thing. Although you can do ADR pretty good. I mean, Hollywood, Hollywood does it all the time, but unless you know what you're doing, it'll just look off and weird. So, for indie productions, uh, we don't have a lot of time, not a lot of budget. Always try to aim to get it in camera or in the audio recorder, whatever you want. Anyway, that's enough for this video. My name is Paul. This is Defiant Films. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Everything you're fighting for